Calvin Ridley has officially touched down in Nashville, and the 2024 Titans season looks to be a positive one. We appreciate you joining us here on Titans Today. I'm your host, Jay Sanders, and Will. There's a lot of rumors floating around about what the Titans will do next. They cut somebody today to free up $10 million. We tell you who that is, along with what could be next for Rand Carthen and Brian Callen as they continue to try and build up this team and revamp it going into 2024, led by Will Levis. But if you're excited for the moves the Titans have made and you're ready for the 2024 season to begin today, well, then do me a favor, like the video because it certainly helps us out. And plus, more likes means this video is going to go to more Titans fans. And I don't know about you, I would like to have some more Titans fans a part of Titans today and grow this community to as large as we possibly could. Takes a couple seconds, just go, on there, go down there and hit that like button. I would certainly appreciate it. All right, so we've talked about the Titans getting Calvin Ridley, but are they done, though? Because, well, it seems to me Rand Carthen is almost preparing for another move. Now, they've made a lot of moves over the past couple days. Obviously, the big one being Calvin Ridley. Lloyd Cushenberry was also a pretty nice deal. But they still have a lot of money to spend, and they freed up some more. Today, they cut offensive tackle Andre Dillard, which freed up over $10 million in cap space. Now, this was expected. We talked about him as a possible cut candidate just weeks ago. But now, it happens already after Calvin Ridley is in the book. So, let's talk some money here for just a moment. Because we never really got to see the full cap hit for Calvin Ridley until today. So, according to Over the Cap, which... To me and everybody here at Chat Sports, that's the one we use as the best case scenario, the one that we think is the closest to the actual monetary value. They have $64 million to spend. Now, Ridley was the big move, but maybe they could get some more smaller ones going in there. So still, they could help the O-line. The secondary is still a struggle, obviously losing Sean Murphy. Bunting hurts. Chidobe Awuzie was a good grab, but what exactly is left for Rand Carson? Because I guarantee you, he does not want to sit on $64 million for next year when we know the cap space hit is going to be increased next year and probably every year until the end of time because that's just the way the NFL is going. Let's take a quick look at everything they've done so far before we kind of talk about what's next. So Tony Pollard, the first big move, three-year, $24 million deal, the pseudo Derrick Henry replacement. Now, obviously, he's not going to be anywhere close to that. And I assume it's going to be a running back by committee here in Tennessee with Pollard along with Mr. Tajay Spears, who, by the way, changed his number to number two. So get watched out for him because it's going to be cool to see him. Lloyd Cushenberry, big moves on the offensive line, four-year, $50 million deal. Record-breaking deal for centers, by the way. And then Chita Bayouzier, three-year, $36 million deal. Cornerback help that kind of replaces Sean Murphy Bunting, but given the secondary play, I would like another CB to come add on along, which we will talk about later. Kenneth Murray, two years, $15 million deal. Funny enough, he posted a goodbye to the Chargers. It was all chat GPT. That's what we found out. So, uh, hey, he knows ball, hopefully, at least. So, Kenneth Murray back, and he is now in Nashville. A couple of other minor moves. Shout out Charles, the offensive tackle, one-year deal. He's going to be depth-wise. Julius Chestnut returning to Tennessee, the running back. Uh, just helps provide a little bit of depth. I still think the Titans could select a running back in the draft in the later parts, maybe the fifth round, sixth round. Mason Rudolph, a one-year deal, $3.62 million, the new backup QB as he'll help out Will Levis and potentially, if Levis goes down, be the guy that steps in. Calvin Ridley, the big move, four years, $92 million. And then a couple of news that maybe you weren't aware of I want to hit. Nick Folk agreed on the same day as Calvin Ridley, one year, $3.75 million. And then we didn't get to talk about this one. Nick westbrook Akine. Back with the Titans on a one-year deal. So I have to believe the wide receiver moves are pretty solid for the Titans, given right now their wide receiver room does include DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, you have Nick Westbrook, Akine, on top of which Kyle Phillips, and then, of course, Traylon Burks with all those guys. So I have to think the wide receiver movement may be done at least in the free agency period. I have to see if they decide to get one in a loaded wide receiver draft class. Let's talk about the top free agents available and who the Titans could sign here because I think a lot of these guys could fit on almost any roster, but given the Titans' moves already, what makes the most sense? First off, Justin Simmons, the safety, number one guy. I could see him going to Tennessee. Obviously, the secondary needs help. Safeties have been a problem, but I really would think they may try and help that in the draft this year. Not a great safety draft, but at the same time, Simmons would be a lot of money for potentially a risk factor. Tyron Smith, a great offensive tackle. Uh, I just don't think it's going to be worth it when you already got Lord Cushenberry, and hopefully we'll have Joe Alt there at number seven for you. Mike Williams, great receiver. Again, I still think the wide receiver movement is done in Nashville. 
at least for wide receiver free agency wise. Chase Young, he's an interesting one that we'll talk about here, the defensive end. The edge is really important for the Titans, and they do not have many helpers. Stephon Gilmore, a cornerback that I could see joining the Titans, then uh, 6 through 10. We've got to go through these pretty quickly here. Jadavion Clowney, Quandre Diggs, Julian Blackman, a couple of safeties that honestly wouldn't be bad fits for Tennessee. Then you got Xavier Howard and Tredavious White. White, pretty good quarterback and a former first-round pick that was cut in the mass exodus in Buffalo. Let's take, let's take a look at the team needs here because it's important to see what they've hit on, what they haven't hit on just yet. Here's my personal opinion. Maybe you think differently. I think the offensive line they're covered on. You got Lloyd Cushenberry. You got some depth. You're going to get Joe Alt. So at worst, you're going to have Peter Skaronsky, Lloyd Cushenberry, and Joe Alt as your front three. Just about figuring out those tackle positions. So uh, we could see maybe a Tyron Smith signing, but I would think more or less probably going to be getting Joe Alt maybe a lower level tackle on the back end of this free agency and see if you can do that. Wide receiver, obviously hit that. Calvin Ridley, great there. Nick Westbrook, he now re-signed. I think wide receiver wise, you are good. The secondary and the defensive end though, I don't think they've gotten there great because Judy Bay Wouzier is great. He's a cornerback and you got Kenneth Murray in the linebacker position, but I don't consider that secondary with the way the Titans scheme their defense and the way that I've seen Brian Callahan formulate his defense along with Denard Wilson. Being a former secondary coach, He's going to want true secondary guys. And the defensive end is just a madhouse right now. Danico Autry heading to the Texans. A lot of holes to fill there. I'm curious to ask you, though, this question. Which is the more important role the Titans still need to fill? Is it secondary? Because that could honestly be a huge role in the way the Titans succeed or don't succeed in 2024. Or is it defensive end? What does Rand Carthen need to do here to round out what has been a pretty good free agency period? Type D for defensive end. Type S for secondary What's the bigger need still to come for the Titans? All right, you could get Tyron Smith. I think that is a very important thing that we have to mention because Tyron obviously fits a lot of things the Titans need, including bolstering up the, def the offensive line, which we talked about. I think they needed a whole overhaul. Now, Tyron Smith being the tackle fits out well because Cushenberry is the center. Skaronsky, you could play him at both positions, but I find him to be a better guard than tackle. And then I like, obviously, Joe Alt being a guard as well. So tackle-wise in the outer edges, I want Tyron Smith. And here's why. He's a brick wall. Dude has been amazing in his time with the Cowboys. And he's been in the league for a long time. It'd be really nice to have him coach up both Peter Skaronsky and Joe Alt. One sack allowed, one hit, 16 hurries this past year, just three penalties. And a really good PFF grade around 83. Uh, overall, though, Titan Smith was solid at everywhere he has gone. And I know that it would be a little bit of risk just because of his age, but given you have a young offensive line with Skronsky and potentially Alt, I want somebody to coach these guys up. With Dillard cut too, this is perfect because Dillard was that tackle position that honestly stunk. He was really bad this past year. And so this fills a need. And I think it works out. You have $64 million to spend. Tyron Smith, at worst, or maybe at best, whatever you want to call it, $10 million a year. I think that's what you could probably get him for. I think two years, $20 million with a signing bonus and maybe some incentives to make it worth up to 25. I'm doing that every day of the year. That's just me. Let's talk about Sean Murphy Bunting because he is headed to the desert in Arizona as he left to go play with the Cardinals. And so with that, they get, the Titans did get Chudabia Wuzier, which is great. But we know the cornerbacks with Roger McCreary, uh, Christian Fulton was in the secondary they just weren't good. I think, again, just like the offensive line, you need to overhaul the cornerbacks as well because the safeties had some positive moments here and there, uh, but the quarterbacks really want to make sure we revamp that. So I'm suggesting you sign another cornerback and another Cowboy. I mean, you got Pollard, get Stephon Gilmore. Dude was great in 2023, has, has kind of revitalized his career over the past three years, really struggled in his last year in New England, but then with Carolina and now with Dallas, has played great along with playing in Indianapolis that one year. 68 tackles, two interceptions, 13 pass breakups. Chidibe Wuzier, Stephon Gilmore, two lower-end cornerback signings, but I still think pretty good. And then you draft a cornerback and say round three. That would be my opinion. Gilmore would fit in well in a lot of different facets. I think that overall, again, experience level is great. So Chidibe, who is pretty experienced as well, helps out what was really a young cornerback room last year. And on top of which, Denard Wilson has been really, really great in scheming secondaries because that's what he was coming from. He was a secondaries coach. Now this is the first time as a defensive coordinator, I hope he still puts an emphasis, emphasis on the secondary. So we could see two brand new cornerbacks in the Titans secondary. Chidabea Wuzier 
and Stefan Gilmore, who is yet to sign just yet. Do you think he could come? Well, we will have to wait and see. Make sure that you like this video because the Titans could be the dang new Cowboys. Stephon Gilmore, he comes. You got Tony Pollard, he's come. And there's one other guy who got released today that I find would be an interesting signing for the Tennessee Titans. That would be none other than the man, the neck guard himself, Leighton Vander Esch. He had a neck injury this past year that held him out the last 12 games. But you cannot deny his effort and agility and overall effect on the Cowboys defense and the way he worked with Dan Quinn. I find he would be a great fit, especially since the Titans lost Aziz al Shair to the Texans. In fact, two of their top defensive guys, Nico Autry and Aziz, both went to Houston. So with this being said, Kenneth Murray is a great linebacker addition, but I want somebody to kind of be the leader. Leighton Van Der Esch has experience in that. I would like to see him come on and join the revamped Tennessee Titans. Hit that subscribe button. We got free coverage here. You're not going to find better coverage than right here on Titans today. I'm telling you, it's going to be worth your while because it's free. Worst comes to worst, you subscribe today. Two days later, you hate us. Unsubscribe. It's not going to hurt my feelings, but I'd certainly appreciate if you gave us a shot. As always, we're putting out content as much as possible. And with the Titans still having a lot of money, moves are still to come. Make sure you're on top of it right here on Titans today. Let's look at the defensive line real quick, because obviously Danico Autry headed to H-Town along with Aziz al -Shair. The Titans could really use some help on the edge. I think that the defensive line with Jeffrey Simmons is great, but they need some help besides him. It can't just be him. Now, if you recall, the Titans were interested in Eric Armstead. He signed a pretty, decent, pretty nice deal with the Jacksonville Jaguars, so he's out of the mix. There's two guys, though, I want to talk about. The first one being name value great, Chase Young. Played with two teams this past year in Washington and in San Francisco. Had seven and a half sacks combined across the two. There was worries and rumblings of his effort not being appreciated and not being applied in San Francisco. Obviously in the Commanders, there was some locker room problems that were talked about. And the way that he was left out of there, it sounded like he just wasn't wanted anymore. The former Ohio State Buckeye, though, cannot deny his ability. He's great in a lot of different facets. And maybe a reset in a smaller market will help him out. Hopefully, the Titans can maybe put a little bit of a one-year deal together, just try a little prove-it type deal. But if not, you could also go another decent name brand than a guy who revitalized his career this year, Jadavion Clowney. Nine and a half sacks with the Ravens. Now, I do attribute some of those to the Ravens' defense being literally incredible this past year. But you still got to take into the account his stats were pretty good. 43 tackles, nine tackles for loss, nine and a half sacks. Hit the QB nearly 20 times and had five pass breakups with those long arms. Two name values are great. I think in Tennessee, it would be bad to get a name value guy. So, who would you rather have as an edge rusher? Chase Young or Jadavion Clowney here with the Tennessee Titans in Nashville for 2024 to try and bolster up the defense? Because we know the offense is starting to look good. I like Pollard. He got Tajay Spears. Will Levis is in for a sophomore year, hopefully a sophomore boost. DeAndre Hopkins still has one year on his contract. Jackson, or, excuse me, Calvin Ridley said that he is 25 today, even though his actual age is 29, has had two years off football. He looks great. He looks great. I hope he plays great. I honestly think either of these guys, the defense really could use some help in any way. And uh, either way you slice it, it doesn't matter if they perform or not. People are going to have to worry about them. And when you're worrying about Jeffrey Simmons and Chase Young on the same line, even if you have some rando on your other defensive interior lineman, it's going to be one guy on him. I mean, there's a couple of guys. I know Mike Dana, also a free agent, could potentially get him on the edge. There's a way that the Titans could come out of here with a pretty solid defensive line, given you have Simmons locked up for the next three years. So I'd take either, but we'll have to wait and see. Again, hit that subscribe button because we're putting out Titans content. And if you enjoyed the show today, like the video. I feel like we're putting out better and better content as the days go on. And honestly, as we get closer to the NFL draft, I'm getting more excited, and I hope you are too. But for now, Titans fans, you know what? You love it. Say it with me in the comments. Tighten up, and peace out.